Okay, in this exercise, we're looking at assembling. So if we click new assembly, that will take us into our assembly environment. Um, just make sure we're on the home tab. The good idea is to go and save our assembly straight away. And if we save this, um, where we actually want to, um, uh, where we've got all, all of our parts. So um, I'm going to go and save this um, into my program. Um, and we're going to go and call this um, engine in there. Okay, so once we've done that, um, once we've done that, we can now use the insert component command. This will open up this dialog box. If we click the middle icon here, the little pin, that will kind of keep that in location. And then if we click the little home button, that will take us to the location of where we saved this file. Understand why we saved it now. So this will show us the items that we can then go and bring in. So the first item that we're going to bring in is going to be crankcase. So if we find crankcase, press on the left mouse button and go and drag that in. That first item is going to come in and that's going to be grounded. You can see our icon, our little orange icon on the left has got a little kind of diamond with a line on top of it. If we hold over it's going to say it's grounded. And we can see at the bottom of the screen it says fully positioned. So that means this one is grounded. So next we're going to go and bring in the bearing that's going to go in the front on here. So if we find bearing front and go and drag that in, it's always a good idea to try and drag it like roughly where it needs to go, but slightly offset. So I'm going to go and drag that over here and that's going to go and highlight. And this is going to go into what we call assemble or flash fit. So this means that I can click on faces and it's going to go and match those faces up. I can also click and hold on a face and go and drag in the current degree of freedom. So if I press and hold the left mouse button, drag it and then right click to deselect. I've then deselected, so select left. Left and drag moves it, right click deselects it. So what we need now is to select this face on here and go and sit this in here. And then I'm not, I'm not going to worry about rotation, I'm just going to press the escape key to come out of there. Next we're going to find collet. So if we go onto the list and go and find. So next we're going to find collet and we're going to drag that in. And we're going to go and strain that here. Notice we've got a cone. Uh, well, we're going to select a key point as well, so we need to be careful and make sure that we select the cylinder and match that up and then use that drag option to go and get that in the right kind of location and right click and go and set that on there. Next we're going to find the, the drive washer, so if we go to drive washer, go and drag this. This time you'll see that we've got the cone on there, so we are actually going to go and click the cone, so you're going to automatically find the at the center point of the cone. If it doesn't find that on that one, hover over um, and we might have to go and use a slightly different relationship if it, if it can't go and find the correct center point. So what we can do, we can choose relationship types and find connect and we click on that cone and that cone and that's going to go and connect those, those center points up on there, assuming that we actually get the, get the, uh, get the cone on there. So we can go, let's just try that again. center point of that cone and the center of the cone. Do our axial line between those two as well. Notice I'm choosing the manual options and that's going to that in the right position. So these relationships we've got flash fit, mate, max one line, um, and plane or line are our standard relationships on there as well. Okay, so next we're going to find bear and rear. So we're going to spin round so we can see the inside on here. And then if we bear and rear, go and drag that in. Again, I'm going to do an axial line first on there. Now I'm going to go and drag that out using that, using the same kind of tools as before. Right click to deselect, select that face, and then that needs to go and sit on that face. Good. I'm going to go Control I and do a quick save on there. Next, we're going to go and find the crankshaft, um, not crankcase, crankshaft, and we're going to go and Bring that in on here. Uh, the first one is axial line. That's um, reasonably self-explanatory. Okay, and now we need to think about where that's going to go and constrain back in there. So the crankshaft is going to be um, is going to be centered. Um, it's probably a a, um, a really simple relationship on here uh, to get this. Um, what we can also do to make life easier 
um, is go into these uh, these these options and have a look, see where these see where these fit on here. Um, but what I'm going to do on here, I'm going to reset that back to standard, and I'm going to create a, a section view just so I can see what we're working with. So if we click on the PMI tab at the top and click on section by plane, and then press the X key. That will that will that, that, that will go and create a section. Once we've done that, if you just click the green tick and then finish. As long as you've got the default set in, we should we should be able to see what that looks like on there. So we can see where the crankshaft can go. So we can see we've got that face is going to go onto that bearing. So we can then click the home button, assemble, click on that face, and click on face to get that crankshaft in position on there. We can we can just untick the section view on here or turn the eye off and that's going to go and take that back to as that was before. So next we're going to go and find um, the cover gasket. So if we find cover gasket and go and assign that, click face to face and then do a cylinder and then do one of the comes up on there on there you know that the whole the whole pitch circle diameter is incorrect on there so that's always a useful little option on there next if we find cover and go and follow the same process we've just done on there making sure this slot is at the top on here so we're going to do face to face if it goes the wrong way we can press the f key just tap the f key on the keyboard and that will go and correct that go and do cylinder to cylinder and then i'm going to do the same hole to get that in situ on there. Next we're going to look down the top and we're going to go and position the piston piston sleeve. So if we drag the piston sleeve in and do the cylinder to cylinder and then do this top face onto here and then we can see we've got a, a little option to stop it rotating and that's then going to go and get that piston sleeve in situ nicely for us. So next we're going to go and drag the rod in, but what we're going to do, we're going to kind of constrain this independently above it. So if we go and find rod and go and, and go and, and go and drag that in, if we double click it will, it will place it randomly, so I like, I like to drag it in, I accidentally double clicked on there, but I'm going to not worry about that. And then next we're going to find the wrist pin, so if we go and find wrist pin and go and drag that in on there, we're going to go and link that into there. This time we're going, to, we're going to try and make sure that is centralised within that. So if we go to our relationship types and choose centre plane, and we're going to make sure this bottom option is set to double. And we're going to click the two outside faces, and then the two faces on here, and that's going to go and centralise that within there. So quite a nice little option on there. We can escape that and not worry about that. Next we're going to go and find piston. So if we grab piston in, and if we go and link the, the wrist pin to the, to the piston on there, and then we're going to do the same kind of thing, apart from this time we're going to use the centre plane, but we're going to use single, because we're going to go and link the cylindrical shape to those two faces on there. So our first option is the single, and our second is those faces. If we look through that hole, that makes it easier to go and do that second one. And then next we're going to, bring, we're going to find ring, that's the spin ring, and go and drag that in, and go and position that in the slot. Um, orientation doesn't really matter. I'm just going to get that in situ on there, and then press escape. Next, we're going to go and constrain this, and so we've got our sub assembly all nicely. So I want to click back on assemble. We'll we'll put the piston so that's lined up in lined up on there, and then I'm going to press escape. So I'm still in assemble, and I can then click on that cylinder, and then the cylinder on the crankshaft down here. And that's then going to go and get that piston in situ. Obviously we've got flip on there, so uh, we've got that the wrong way. Um, we might be lucky that we that we don't do that, but I'm just going to go Control Z on there. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to, I'm going to choose assemble, and I'm going to click, and I'm going to go and drag this down to the right, to pretty much the right kind of area on there. And I'm going to go and turn off the crankcase just to make life a little bit easier. So now we don't have to worry about trying to trying to correct that. 
that will hopefully go to the right kind of position already. So now we've got our piston is in the right is in the right location. So by taking that roughly to where it is and save those options, controls there being a standard shortcut that's then going to go and make life easier on there. Next we've got a few little bits to go on the top. So um, if we go and find um, the head and go and drag that on, uh, we need to make sure that these are running left to right. So once you can once you constrain that and we've constrained the cylinder to the appropriate cylindrical item, we need to make sure that the hole in the head um, that links to to these are going to be correct. So I'm going to go and choose this hole and this hole to make sure that the head is running left to right like that on there. Next we're going to choose the glow plug. So if we go and find glow plug um, and this time I'm going to choose something slightly different. So what I'm going to do on hover under and I'm going to hover over and use quick pick. So hover over this edge and then right click and select edge. That is going to allow me to go and select this edge and go and constrain that all in one go. That is what we call a like insert command. If we can't select the edge, uh, we can go into our options and make sure all the, the, the option for circular edge is ticked. So normally I will go in and turn all these and quite often I'll turn on some other options on there. As you can see, mine is slightly different. It's worth trying those, seeing if stuff works slightly differently on there. Okay, so last um, we've got our fasteners. So if we do um, hash six head screw um, for the top first. So if we go and take that one in, um, I'm going to do the same fitment I've just I've just done on that one. So I'm going to use that edge, and I'm going to go and pick pick that edge, and that's going to go and position that. We can then use the pattern command. So anything that's got a uh, if we can make use of patterns, it's much better. So if we've got a group of holes that have been created together, or we've been created in a pattern in the part, we can use this intelligence to go and pattern the item. So if I click on that item, click on the click, click on the pattern command, choose the head as the part with the pattern feature, click on all the holes, and then click on the hole that's got the bolt in. So that is our reference position, and then click finish. We can then very quickly choose the, the same for the cover. So if we're going to do the cover screw, I'm going to position this. I'm going to go and use the use the edge use the edge use the edge option. So I'm going to go and hover over there, make sure I find that edge, and pick that on there. Escape, highlight pattern, part, with a pattern, and then the origin, and then click. Then do a control I, and save that. We'll, we'll, let, we'll use some of this for the drafting in the next lesson. So we'll make sure we save that, that's all good. Hopefully you managed to follow that, go back and try it again, always, always a good idea. Um, we haven't locked any rotations, we're not going to cover that in this, but we do cover that when we do full training. Thank you very much.